Joining me now from Johns Creek, Georgia, political consultant with the Weathers Corp, Seth Weathers. Seth, uh, Nebraska and West Virginia, solid majorities. Uh, he should have solid majorities in those states, uh, and given the, the circumstances right now. Do you see it continuing on into Montana, into uh, South Dakota, and then finally into California? Yeah, Graham, I think the, the race is wrapped up at this point. The, the primary nomination race is wrapped up, and I think we're going to see that through California. Nebraskans uh, on the exit polling uh, said that they are very, very unhappy with the federal government. This is a common theme that we have seen from exit polling uh, throughout this primary and caucus uh, process. But they also believe that the party, the grand old party, might not unite by the time November rolls around. And that's the trick for Donald Trump right now. I keep saying it on this program. Other people are saying it. And that is, he's got to somehow bring it all together and, and unite the populace along with the conservatives, who really, I think a lot of conservatives feel they've lost a home here in the Republican Party. And then the establishment types. Got to fuse all three factions together. Hey, there's a lot of people that felt like they lost their home when the establishment people have been running the party for a long time as well now. So I'm, I'm kind of starting to feel like I'm a little more welcome home these days. <laughs> so I'm, I'm excited to see uh, the changes that are coming about. And, you know, people talk about, oh, unite the party and everything. The people that I see pissed off are the people in Washington, D.C. It's Paul Ryan. It's John McCain. It's Lindsey Graham, although some of those are relatively coming around now, I suppose. But I think that we're going to see when Trump picks his VP nomination, a nominee, I think what we're going to see is we're going to see the parties. It's going to be someone that the party and the general public, the voters, can coalesce around. But and when they have that person, it, it'll be the person that they absolutely liked the most, which will be the kind of person that Trump will pick, the people right. that hate Trump the most. All right. I, I want to I talk about that in just a second. But first, I want to follow up on especially the conservatives. The conservatives who were supporting Ted Cruz, um, there, there is evidence out there that, that many people are joining that list of uh, never Trump, or they're saying they simply can't support him right now. It's, it's not just anecdotal. Uh, if you're Donald Trump or you're part of the Trump campaign, don't you want to try and reach out to these folks and, and have a message that's going to grab them and get their support? Sure you do. And I think that that's what Trump's doing with the policies and things that he's laid out for the campaign. And, you know, for the quote-unquote conservatives behind, you know, Ted Cruz or Rand Paul or people like that, what have they gotten done? And I think I would rather maybe some of the not all in, all the way, 100 percent perfect, exactly the way we would like it plans. I think I'd rather Trump actually accomplish something in the right direction. And those guys haven't. Well, that's you, you might be correct on, on those particular individuals. It's, it's arguable whether Rand Paul and, and Ted Cruz uh, have a great record in the United States Senate. But certainly the conservative record uh, is a stellar record. It's just it has been muted over the last two or three decades. If you go back to the 1980s, the, the conservative uh, Ronald Reagan record uh, is, is, is what we should be emulating right now. And I think that's what conservatives want to hear. They want to hear a message. They don't want to hear Donald Trump come out and say, well, my tax plan, it's, uh, it's just a starting point. We can negotiate about it. Or, or the minimum wage, uh, yeah, I think the minimum wage can go up. Or the national debt, uh, don't worry about it. The United States government can just print money. That's not a conservative message. I don't know why I'm going to get into this, because it's going to make a lot of people angry. Yes. But... Ron, <laughs> you look so excited about that. <laughs> Ronald Reagan increased taxes 13 times during his presidency. Oh, here we now, go. Oh, Revising oh, history oh, here. It's a, it's, a, it's a completely <laughs> accurate statement. Overall, what, what did he lower taxes? What was, yes. the, what was the top is, marginal it, rate when Ronald Reagan I, took office? I understand. It was a drastic cut. I yes. agree with you. That's my point. But even if, you, if, if Republicans did that day, the Tea Party, the tea, I, I believe the Tea Party would not elect... Ronald Reagan today. I don't agree not, with you, but, but but you're not answering my question. We're not talking about Reagan. We're talking about Donald Trump and this messaging. Don't you think that he ought to start kicking it up a little bit in terms of a conservative constitutional message? Well, I think we're getting into the general election now, and I don't know that uh, heavy on details and white papers is going to be what it's going to get him across the finish line in November. Um, I think that talking about big uh, ideas like Reagan did and talking about major tax policy changes like Reagan did, I think those are going to be the things that's going to bring people around. I think it's going to be coal miners not being put out of work that's going to bring people around.
All right. So the uh, the nomination uh, is is probably going to be secured on June seventh, probably in the uh, New Jersey primary when the results start coming in there. And of course, uh, Chris Christie has been rumored as part of the the possible VP picks. Uh, who else do you think is on that short list? You know, it's hard to say and guess. And you know, obviously, everyone that's tried to guess what Donald Trump's up to in his own mind has failed at that. Uh, over the past year, but I would my guess is that there would be some very strong, credible candidates that I think would make a lot of people comfortable. I think you're he's going to end up with someone that's going to make some of the more establishment people happy, but also make some of the more um, conservative members of the party happy. So someone, and that's a fine line. It's someone fine line. with um, Washington D.C. experience, if you will. Yeah, I mean, I think he's made that very clear. I mean, he's he said uh, multiple times that that is what he's looking for. I mean, he needs a Newt Gingrich to ram down all his uh, new proposals and uh, help get the wall built. And Newt if Gingrich could be one of them, for example, right? Uh, and, and what do you think about right. Paul Ryan? Is, 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 the, is this just a meeting to uh, you know, the, uh, see eye to eye and see where they agree and maybe where they disagree, develop a relationship? Or do you think he could be floating a, a VP for Paul Ryan? I don't know that Paul Ryan has enough time out of the gym and the photo shoots with GQ <laughs> to be able to make it as a VP, but... Uh, I, I don't see I don't see that. I mean, I, I can't imagine it, it would be certainly the, the biggest shocking VP uh, turnaround of it all. I think Paul Ryan has a very fine line to walk right now. He's trying to not anger his base. And he's also trying to not look like the Speaker of the House that's not endorsing the pr Republican presidential nominee. It's actually kind of insane when you think about it. And I think he's walking that line. I think he's in the middle. He's, he's out on the plank right now and he's not sure which way to go. And I think he could fall overboard at any moment. And I think he's aware of that. Well, uh, those are a lot of metaphors there. I think the bottom line is Paul <laughs> Ryan uh, should uh, support uh, many items that uh, conservatives um, support. And I think he's off base, for example, uh, on immigration. But I think Donald Trump, going back to him, uh, there is a, a real problem, a real risk here. They're alienating what I would consider part of the Republican base with a messaging that is not terribly conservative. Seth, thanks. Coming up next, the red faces over bias at Facebook as the Daily Ledger continues.